Well, 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 look who's here. Me. It's four o'clock. It's Thursday. Kind of talking D with Wilson. Every Thursday of the week I get in here, except for last week. And we'll talk about that. It's nothing major. It's just it was, you know, we talk about cannabis this hour, the benefits of cannabis, cannabis legalization, general stories related to drugs. If somebody's come up with a new way to smuggle cocaine in a backpack on a on a rooster, I'll probably cover it. If they've come up with a new design to make you think it's not cocaine, I'll probably talk about it. But this show is kind of talking D with Wilson. So any cannabis related info or news, certainly in North Dakota and Minnesota, I'm your guy. And if that's happening, you can just rest assured that when you come here Thursday on KRWF 95.9, streaming everywhere on the blue and green marble, RadioFreeFargo.org, cannabis will be discussed, especially any laws or legal moves that is being made. Uh, Minnesota, we got a few things to talk about. North Dakota is awfully quiet, but, uh, you know, that's no, uh, that's no surprise. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. And I show him props every Sunday, Antioch Church, 417 Main Avenue, 10 a.m. We do a recovery. If you've got a monkey on your back or you've tossed him off and you can still feel him pulling on your pant leg, we can help you then. 11 a.m. Worship. I'm on stick duty. The songs are beasts this week. I don't know. I didn't realize what I could do until I was asked to do like the impossible. But anyway, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. Black Cottage Alchemy, 1600 MIGs, a locally grown CBD up in this mixture of love. It's got comfrey, colloidal silver, a bunch of other whatnots in there for your skin. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy for sponsoring this show now we got a record fair but let me tell you this at 420 we're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news i don't want to forget that you probably haven't forgot that but that's what happens on this show little red tapey tape little song a song then boom 420 we talk about oh, about 25 minutes or so about the last week in weed all right, but now let me tell you about the Fargo Record Fair programming on Here, <laughs> Programming on KRWF 95.9 LPFM is being underwritten by the 13th Annual Fargo Record Fair. The Fargo Record Fair will take place on Saturday, October 21 from 11 a.m. to 5 at the Fargo Brewing Company located at 610 North University Drive in Fargo. This year, over 45 tables, count them, folks, 45 tables with vinyl records, CDs, 8 tracks, whoa, 8 tracks, cassettes, posters, T-shirts, music, memorabilia, and much more. So check out Stinking the Fargo Record Fair, the 13th, this Saturday. You'll probably catch me moving or moving and grooving. I apparently got to uh, participate in the creation and the depletion of our Muzak that you can always find comfort in at the record fair knowing that we are providing the music. All right? So, anyway, kind of talking to you with Wilson, that's me. This morning, 9 to 11, is Country with Trav. Then you got me, kind of talking to you with Wilson, 4 o'clock. 5 o'clock, in comes the Stinky Arts Music Mart, a mixtape. And then it's not Stinking Artemis Shrine. I, Sorry, guys, or guy, or, you know, robot, whatever's happening tonight it's not artemis shrine and so i'm gonna have to figure out what it even is and i don't know where i even came up with artemis shrine outside i love saying it really spooky like but anyway we're going to uh get into some music we'll come back i'll talk to you about something chances are it's cannabis related again kind of talk indeed with wilson let me tell you about this here, though, first, before we go into a musical break. Fix It Forward Auto Care Trunk or Treats. It's happening Sunday, October 29, 430 to 630 p.m. They'll be at the South Fargo location. That's Fix It Forward Auto Care, 629 53rd Avenue, South Fargo. They're going to be stuffed, treat bags, cocoa, and games. And hopefully they don't play games with the cocoa, because nobody should be playing games with hot chocolate. Feel me? But then again, Trunk or Treat, Sunday, October 29th, South Fargo location. I can't talk today. I don't know why. 
cow pie, right? But let's get back to the music. Here's brand new Pokemon. You looked at me. 95.9. Mr. Pokemon in your ear hole. You looked at me. That's what you're hearing on 95.9. KRWF Radio Free Fargo. Dot org Streaming everywhere on the blue and green marble. We can get into your ear hole. And we love to do that here at the best radio pay, best radio station in the world as far as I'm concerned. Kind of talking D with Wilson. I'm Wilson. 420. We're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. I wasn't here last week because it was just kind of a slow. Well, first of all, having ADD, you kind of be you have to be interested in something. There has to be an interest. And when I got to come in here and just talk about numbers and stupid banking, safe banking acts and stuff, which is just lame, you know. And so it's hard for me to get psyched up to come in here and just read some stuff I don't think you guys even want to hear. This week's a little better. And I can assure you I'm not going to take more than two weeks off. It just it was a little I don't I don't know. if I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a lot going on in our world as we speak. And uh, that seems to be taking up some of the space that would normally have people writing you know articles i could use in this particular format feel me but it is what it is minnesota is still legal of course we got to wait till 2025 of course uh and we do have a little something about minnesota i'm going to tell you about as soon as i tell you that programming on 95.9 radio free fargo care double flp has been underwritten by drummer's journey Drummer's Journey offers percussion instruments, hardware, electronics, accessories, and more. They have full service for drummers, including repair, custom building, and lessons. Drummer's Journey is located at Highway 10 East Mall in Moorhead. Their hours are Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7. Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 5. Sundays, noon to 5. For more info, check drummersjourney.com. They have a profile on Facebook. Okay, so like I said, we got something we can talk about. This is from Minnesota Post. Men Post, as they call it. Men Post, Minnesota legalized cannabis. Now it's giving a Missouri-based company up to $15 million in forgivable loans to grow it on the Iron Range. Now, everybody's knee-jerk is like, well, we're, we're paying all these outside state people when we should be using our own people. But then those people don't have $15 million. You know, we don't have that. Missouri, I mean, again, Missouri is literally clearing $8 million a day in Missouri for their legal cannabis program. That's insane. So I don't know what I think about any of it, so we'll just look at it. A Missouri-based cannabis company on Tuesday scored a major investor for a project to build a large grow op in Grand Rapids, the state of Minnesota. Apparently, they're going to build a $67.8 million cannabis growing and manufacturing plant inside a former wood products facility. Two-phase project promises up to 400 jobby jobs, and the state could forgive up to $15 million of the loan if the company meets certain requirements. Okay, so uh, the vote of the iron range was five to three. Commissioner Ida had the final approval once the board gives its recommendation. Among the no votes was a House member who said he suffered from a cannabis addiction as a young man and a senator who questioned why government funds should be going to cannabis businesses, especially with one's connections to other states. Huh. Well, I don't know. But we'll see. Uh, Highway 35 is led by Jack Mitchell, who's president of a group, and Mitchell Hospitality in Kansas City. They sell cannabis in Missouri. Uh, another chair is a Minneapolis-based marketing company. So, anyway, it would be a private investment that would equip a growing and manufacturing facility to produce oils for edibles and other THC products. Our goal is to get into business quick. So, here's here's kind of what I'm trying to say to you here. He goes, we can get up and operating before 90% of the market. There were only two operators in Missouri for the first several months, and at the end of the first year, there were only about 10. Okay. Consequently, we had extremely high prices. So, as the business matures, supply will increase, prices will drop. So, it's imperative, right, that if you're a business, you get going now because then you can charge a lot. You can be first in. All kinds of benefits. So, he says it's very important for us to get in the market quickly. Well, who else can get into the market quickly but somebody with capital? I mean, 
Everybody likes to complain, but I ain't got, I ain't got, uh, I got, I got, I don't have the money. So most banks are reluctant to loan into the industry. So it leaves private investors and whatever. So it's all kind of tricky, you know, but you're listening to kind of talking to you with Wilson. I'm your boy, Wilson at 420. We're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news and I'm going to set that up with a little ditty here at the end of it. We'll come back. We'll laugh, we'll dance, maybe we'll hug and we'll cry. And then we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Here's write a letter, J.J. Gray. Who write a letter, J.J. Gray Mofro here on KRWF 95.9 and LPFM Radio Free Fargo. Or can I talk ND with Wilson every Thursday I get in here, 420. It's now. We open a big fat bag of cannabis news. So get ready, free your mind, and your hind end will follow. See you in a bit. Hey, what up, what up, what up, everybody, what up, what up? It's 420. It's time to talk about cannabis dues. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? And if you're living in the Fargo-Moorhead area, what a beautiful day we've got here. Man. All right. Again, uh, you know, these news stories could have a little more zippity doo as far as I'm concerned. And there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, if, if see, my daughter has told me that I cannot do accents on this show. I am not good at it. They come off real racist. I'm just not good at it. I like to do it. It's fun to do. But I promised my only offspring that... Uh, I won't do them because, I mean, I could really jazz these articles up if all of a sudden I started, you know, all oh, Florida, I thought I you know what I mean? But I, I can't. Can't do it. Can't do it. Anyway, cannabis moment. Florida Attorney General defends firing of correction officer for using medical cannabis to treat PTSD. Federal law makes it a felony for prohibited persons to possess a firearm and prohibited persons include those law unlawfully using controlled substances. A case filed with the Florida Supreme Court tests whether the DOC properly fired an officer. The First District Court of Appeal upheld the firing, but Samuel Ortiz now argues before the Supreme Court that the action violates both the Constitution sanction of medical cannabis and the U.S. Supreme Court's recent ruling establishing a broad right to bear firearms. So a petition was filed, and uh, the opinion states because he uses medical cannabis, he cannot lawfully possess a firearm. Each time he does, he is committing a felony. And so it permits a sanction on medical cannabis patients, and it ain't right. Florida's voters in 2016 added an amendment the state constitution allowing the use of cannabis to treat a number of conditions. The state regulates the drugs cultivation and sale. So we'll see what's up with that. So, again, I mean, he's a veteran. I, he's a veteran. He says it helps him. Let him keep his job. I mean, it, it kind of just starts to tire me out because it's just we don't protest too much for veterans. We love to say, oh, man, thank you for your service, providing us a safe place to be, to make our own decisions. But we ain't going to let you make your own decision about what helps you when you come back after helping making us safe. It's ridiculous. It's down right ridiculous. So for those of you who were in here about eight to nine minutes ago, uh, this is from Men Post. Minnesota legalized cannabis. Now it's giving a Missouri-based company up to $15 million in forgivable loans to grow it on the Iron Range in a building that isn't even being used. There's that. And that sounds like a fun place to, like, to go up and tour. You know what I mean? Go up to the Iron Range. I don't know what I'm doing. Something broke on this microphone. Oh, there. I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it. Can I talk and deal with Wilson? It's 420. We're talking about cannabis news. As a side note, that's how I'm going to fill this time up, just repeating what's going on. I'm in the studio. You're not. Okay. Lawsuit aims to block cops from smoking grass in New Jersey. Jersey City Public Safety Director James is suing New Jersey and its Attorney General to block cops from keeping their jobs if they smoke the grass. 
Of course, he says, if employees who drive buses and forklifts and work with equipment that are hazardous aren't allowed to test positive, so why should the police? And I say that's a good question. Let them all. You know, let them all off the hook. But I remember covering this story going, that's awesome. They're going to let cannabis be used by coppers. Well, again, the lawsuit is the whole federal law prohibits cops from carrying ammunition, thus making them ineligible to be police officers. Police officers in New Jersey are required to possess and receive firearms in order to fulfill their duties. So the lawsuit clarified where specifically the law would need to be applied. It's all just a bunch of junk. Shea defended his reasoning in challenging police officers' eligibility based on testing positive. If one of our officers wants to do that, they can smoke as much as they want. They can no longer perform the duties of a police officer. We will have to terminate them if we become aware. I don't know what's going on. But uh, they're they're refusing to acknowledge the conflict between federal law and the state law. We all agree that they smoked. They utilized cannabis. We all agree that they would need to carry a firearm to be police officers. So it should be as simple as a judge clarifying the supremacy clause. I mean, and he's they're kind of right. You know, because if the law is the law is the law is the law, then supremacy clause is what would apply here, I would imagine. Shea said the officers who were fired were all offered jobs in his department that did not involve guns. Hey, uh, Officer Dingleberry, uh, well, you can't have a gun, but would you like to sweep out my office? <laughs> but the city refused to give them their old jobs back. He added that they were fired not because they used cannabis, because they can no longer carry a firearm. See? They buy, a, and of course, when they ask, like, how dare you? They're like, listen, we we never said it was, blah, 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 blah. and we never claimed they couldn't, boo, 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 boo. They just couldn't. Doop, 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 doop. Oh, you see what I mean? Because I know I know what I said. Made perfect sense to me. So what else we got? Okay, check this out. This is from High Times. And, and I and this is what a wild cannabinoid. And I'm so okay. So nobody can talk back to me here. But all these different cannabinoids are just in the plant, right? Or they're in the CBD plant. I don't know. But if you were to consume a regular plant, all of these cannabinoids that are showing up that people are isolating would be in that natural product, right? They're just yanking them out and highlighting them? I don't know, but check this cannabinoid out. It's the THCM cannabinoid, okay? THCM. No, they uh, they don't claim that it's psycho- psychological or psychotic. There's no buzz with it. But it potentiates, all right? Apparently, it potentiates. So, it makes it. So, basically, it's naturally graded, uh, degraded form of THC. And uh, it's technically a metabolite of THC. Uh, hemp brands are using isomerization techniques to turn CBD into THCM through the rearranging of molecules. Because what we do know about THCM makes it worth creating for the general public. Okay, so is it intoxicating? Um, they don't know. They don't really know. As of now, it doesn't look promising. It doesn't seem to have any psychoactive capabilities. According to the title, we know about its chemical structure. But what will happen is, is the vapes containing THCM also contain psychoactive cannabinoids. So what is the THCM actually contributing? Well, uh, it's not psychoactive, but it's a cannabinoid potentiator. So that what that means is it makes the psychoactive cannabinoids strengthen and enhances, makes them stronger. So theoretically, then combining, say, THCM with THCP would make THCP more intoxicating. Keep in mind, again, the THCM is such a new cannabinoid, we can't say for certain it doesn't offer a high. But again, so what about specific benefits? Uh, they got no idea, but here's what they know. They know it's got a potentiating nature. So that, I mean, that sounds kind of fun. You just add it to give everything else a little extra bumpy bump. Don't know, but this is, uh, let's see what we got here. This is from Normal. Analysis is drug-sniffing dogs typically false alert. 
I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Drug sniffing dogs provide false alerts approximately 75% of the time, according to an analysis of 10 years of data provided to members of Australian Parliament. And they've got the Australian sheepdog. So if those guys can, if they can't smell it, then the percentage has got to be off for those other dogs. The analysis reviewed over 94,000 searches. The overwhelming majority of those searches failed to identify any drugs. According to reporting, uh, the worst year for drug detection dogs, uh, oh. the worst year for drug detection dogs was 2014, when only 21 percent of the 14,000 searches found anything. The best was two years later in 2016, where 32.5 percent of the almost 9,000 searches were accurate. That's crazy. So, analysis conducted by reporters similarly reported that drug sniffing dogs false alerted over half of the time. And they were most likely to do so in instances where the suspect was Latino. <laughs> um, what? Okay, let me look at this again. So the Chicago Tribune similarly reported that drug sniffing dogs false alerted over half of the time. And that was basically in instances where the suspect was Latino. Handler beliefs affect outcomes of scent detection dog deployments. Uh-huh. Now... It was also reported in Animal Cognition that drug dogs frequently false alert when their handlers perceive that illicit substances are present. I think that's what happened to me in South Dakota. I think that's what happened. But whatever, that's an interesting article. I'm glad I uh, was able to uh, get that out. Now, this is good news, Cannabis Moment. American Nurses Association, it's a big deal, AMA, A&A, officially recognizes cannabis as a formal specialty practice area. So let's give our cool nurses a hand. A professional organization representing more than 5 million nurses has announced its formal recognition of cannabis as a nursing specialty practice. This recognition highlights the essential role and special contribution of cannabis nurses to the healthcare system. And it promotes enhanced integration of cannabis therapies for healthcare consumers across diverse healthcare settings. The group bills itself as the sole reviewing body of specialty nursing scope of practice and standards of practice. ACNA, American Cannabis Nurses Association, is officially recognized as a specialty nursing practice. That's awesome. So nurses are the largest group of health professionals providing an opportunity to change the health care paradigm. Now, this is from Cannabis Moment as well. Alaska airline worker fired over positive cannabis tests will be reinstated under arbitration panel decision, otherwise known as APD. An Alaskan airline technician. No, it wasn't even. That's it. Just technician in Washington state who was fired over a positive test had his termination reversed earlier this month after formally challenging the decision, insisting he did not knowingly use it. Man, though those that works. I don't know. The worker whose name was redacted, provided by a lawyer for his union, was given a random test in July 22. The level of THC metabolites came back above a minimum threshold. He was immediately fired, given the safety sensitive nature of his lead aircraft maintenance role. <laughs> what? He's a cleaner. The employee referred to in the decision as the grievant didn't deny the accuracy of the test, but he denied using it. Couldn't explain the positive drug result. He speculated he may have unwittingly ingested a cannabis edible at a block party, barbecue. I don't smoke cannabis, the worker said. The barbecue would be to me the only avenue that I would have ingested it. At the time he was hired or fired, the worker had been employed for about 22 years. Oh, come on. He'd also passed several randoms without incident, had no disciplinary record. He held the lead role since 2017. Though the airline industry is federally regulated, the worker lived in and attended the block party where cannabis is is legal under state law. So it seems now for the first time, this shift that we felt underneath our feet is beginning to reflect in decisions related to a cannabis positive. Alaska Airlines argued that it was undisputed that the worker failed it. And they, they hit you with that zero tolerance policy. Uh, the company said the employees claim that he may have accidentally ingested a magical snack was a fantastical story and a bizarre speculation. 
He concluded that the theory was a guess. He had no specific reason. He felt no physical effects, as would suggest he consumed it. <laughs> the company said a far more reasonable conclusion is that he um, had it in his system because he chose to use a product. So the positive drug test was conclusive proof that the employee ingested the uh, substance at issue. And that it was not required to prove a worker's intent to have used the drug. If any employee were able to escape the consequences, uh, denying it, uh, it said Alaska's drug and use policy would be utterly toothless and the company would have no meaningful reason to or way to deter drug use among, among the safety sensitive employees. Okay. Cannabis moment again. After smelling legal, after smelling legal cannabis in New York, Colombian president denounces the enormous hypocrisy of U.S. led drug war. Unveiling Colombia's new national drug policy, President Gustavo recalled smelling the odor of cannabis during a recent visit to the U.S. Cannabis is sold today in Times Square. Petro said it smelled on all the streets all the way around the corner, and they sold it like any other product. I suppose they charge taxes and the New York City or the state of New York lives partially from them. That's where the war on drugs began. How many people have been imprisoned? How many people have died because undoubtedly illegality bought pilots? The president spoke October 3rd while announcing a new national drug policy. He described the plan as an effort to break cycles of poverty. He plans, uh, he, the plan seeks to cut the country's cocaine production by nearly 43%. We'll see. That's about half, they say. Uh, to mitigate environmental impacts, bop, 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 bop. We want a prosperous peasant economy that allows, as I said in my campaign speeches, any daughter or any son of the peasant, oh, peasant, to study medicine, whatever. Why, why is he calling them peasants? I mean, I declare the peasant community. So he's discussing legalizing cannabis in Colombia as a, mean of, a means of reducing the influence of the illegal market and has also signaled that the policy change should be followed by releasing people. Who are in prison. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so this is from Cannabis Now. I'm not going to get into it too much. Elevate your scent game with these fresh plant-friendly fragrances. The question must be asked, when does being sprayed with skunkweed smell good? Well, it doesn't. But when hemp extracts in their rawest form are carefully infused with the likes of pink pepper, oh, oud, Vetiver or vanilla sandalwood as a fragrance, it takes on a whole new sensation of personalization and luxury. The truth is, I thought it'd be hard pressed to conjure up enough fragrance brands to fill a page. But there's definitely a bunch of stinking perfumes. Cannabis patchouli, cowboy kush. I don't know. I just, I just don't feel like. Smelling like cannabis is a good idea. Uh, high times. McCormick sues cannabis company over parody sticker. McCormick and company sued crab cakes and cannabis, <laughs> saying a product mimic Old Bay seasoning, and it did. And they uh, said it was too similar. So uh, crab cakes and cannabis took the opportunity to challenge the implications of a Supreme Court decision. Uh, the issue brings up the question that if parodies aren't allowed, are we taking trademark laws too far? The novelty sticker parodies the old base spice jar, but it ended up prompting a lawsuit. Uh, while we firmly believe in the protection of parody and First Amendment rights, the prohibitive cost of litigation led us to make the difficult decision to discontinue our parody sticker. Uh, the cease and desist letter sent from McCormick and Company claims that the parody sticker featuring the words 420 Bud and designed in a way that's reminiscent of the old bay jar infringed upon the trademark. So, McCormick stated the company takes this matter very serious as it is not in the business of sponsoring products relating to marijuana. I don't like their seasoning anyway. Inglewood police officers sold cocaine taken from evidence locker. That's how it goes in Inglewood, feel me? A uh, former police officer who allegedly stole drugs out of the evidence lockup sold them to an informant is expected to accept a plea deal in lieu of a hefty prison sentence. So he served as a police union rep. He was uh, 20 year, 21 years cop before being accused of drug dealing. According to the DOJ, a second meeting was then arranged with one key of Coke for 22000 Uh He brought the Coke to the informant's workplace, which was what a crazy. Yeah, bring it to my job. You know, hey, welcome to Chipotle. You got that 22000 for my Coke? Weird. 
plea agreement entered by Baca would later show that before these exchanges, Baca allegedly told the witnesses that he could get him one key of China, one key of Coke, two keys of China, and an unlimited supply of black tar horse, e horse, which a witness said he had stolen during traffic stops. The DOJ said that in his plea agreement, he admitted that he abused his position by stealing drugs from the lockup and reselling them. 44-year-old Gerardo Economo of South L.A. was arrested in connection with this case. Uh, when they looked at his house, they found drugs and a firearm, a firearm in his home, as well as a key of heroin, half a key of suspected cocaine buried in his backyard. Economo was also arrested in Vegas with three keys of heroin. Well, these guys are just, you know what I mean? So we'll see how that goes. Let's keep going here. Anyway, this is from High Time. Study legal cannabis retailers not linked to rise in crime. Uh, according to a study published this month, the opening of a state-regulated cannabis dispensary has no significant impact on local crime in the average neighborhood. So, I think we all knew that. You know what I'm saying? I think we all knew that. Cannabis moment. As marijuana banking bill stagnates in Congress, Maryland regulators share tips to reduce burglaries targeting ATMs. Well, maybe we can learn something. Let's learn something here, should we, folks? By the way, you've been listening to Canada Talk and D with Wilson. I'm Wilson. 420 every Thursday. I open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And we about out this sucker. But we got a few minutes left. Again, it's a beautiful day in Fargo Moorhead. I love you all. Keep shining your light. Now, let's talk about this. Cannabis regulators in Maryland have issued guidance meant to help minimize the risk. These burglaries have targeted ATMs inside the dispensaries. So they're issuing this notice to help reduce vulnerability to burglaries. So cannabis retailers are typically cash-based businesses. And that can make them, uh, you know, more appealing to burglaries. So, cannabis regulators said that in order to prevent crime, ATMs should be moved away from doorways, exterior doors, and windows. Um, duh. ATMs should not be visible from outside the dispensary. If possible, the tips say relocate ATMs to a part of the facility that is separate from any areas directly accessible by exterior doors and to secure the machines to walls or floors. Regulators also recommend putting dye packs in the business's cash box and or stainage signage that states the cash box is equipped with dye packs. Let's see. The crime prevention tips also recommend a host of deterrent devices, including security cameras, ATM devices that make a machine difficult to move, ATM sensors and alarms, hidden trackers, etc. To prevent entry into businesses themselves, regulators also recommend bollards or other parking lot barriers, blast shock and impact resistant films for windows and doors. Loud alarm systems. So, I think we've all learned something. And if you're thinking about putting an ATM in a burglary-sensitive area, you're welcome. Now, you can check out this article. I'm not going to read it. It's called From Murder Capital to Vacation Destination, Exploring the New El Salvador. Salvador. Apparently, a new young president man's been kicking butt and taking names there. So, check it out. But again, you've been listening to Kind of Talking D with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here. I'm going to play you something fun. Now, if you're familiar with the they're coming to take me away, ha ha, he he, hoo hoo. Well, thanks again to my daughter. She uh, turned me on to the fact that they're coming to get me again. Ha ha. So we've got to play it. And then Napoleon uh, 14 has a little ditty right after that. Here we go. They're coming to get me again. Ha ha. <laughs> I love you, and you love me, and she loves me, and they love you. Can you dig it? There you go, 95.9 KRWF, Radio Free Fargo dot org. We're streaming everywhere on this blue and green marble. You at, we can get in your ear hole. Kind of talking D with Wilson is wrapping up here. But we got Stinky Arts Music Mart on deck. You don't want to go anywhere for that. You're going to stay around. You better stay around. Programming on KRWF LPFM Radio Free Fargo 95.9 is being underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. 
Flatland Guitars, your full-service guitar shop, and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, Paul Reed, Smith Guitars, and other brands. They sell guitars on consignment. They take trade-ins and have a full-service on-site repair center. Check out Flatland Guitar and Luthery on Facebook or visit them in person at 1450 25th Street uh, South in Fargo. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturdays 10 to 5, and closed on the Lord's Day. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 megs of CBD and a bunch of other fun, gooey, ooey, good stuff to put on your body wherever you need it. It'll help you. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. I show him props every Sunday. Antioch Church, downtown, 11 a.m. Holla. I'm out of here, though. Educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can educate others on the benefits. And again, strap on your seatbelts. You got Stinky Arts Music Mart right around the corner. And I'll be back next Thursday. Until then, keep it locked. On 95.9, here's David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace.